If we ask the question, what is a castle and why were they built? Well, the simple answer is for control, domination and power. From the simple earthen wood Norman modern baileys, medieval castle building had progressed to these impressive fortifications in only 200 years. Seven hundred years ago, this castle was at the cutting edge of military technology and seven hundred years later, we can still gaze upon its size and scale and marvel at its architecture, engineering and the sheer amount of effort and money that went into building it. Conway Castle is absolutely awe-inspiring. Its design is a marvel of military architecture. The eight massive towers and two barbicans provide formidable defences, whilst its strategic location allowed control over the vital River Conway. The curtain walls are about 12 feet thick and 30 feet high, making them a powerful barrier against siege engines. The battlements provided defenders with cover and a platform to repel attackers and the two heavily fortified gatehouses with drawbridges and portcullises were designed as killing zones. So who would build such a thing and more importantly why? Conwy Castle's construction began in 1283 by King Edward I as part of his campaign to conquer North Wales. Now, Edward had already built three major castles in Wales by this time, following the same tactic used by William the Conqueror when he invaded England. And the architect and engineer behind Edward's castles was Master James of St George. Master James of St George was a renowned architect and military engineer. He was brought from Savoy to England and given a budget of around £15,000. That's around £10 million in today's money and he crafted one of the most impressive fortifications in Europe. Master James was responsible for the entire project, coordinating the teams of workers and ensuring all the materials were delivered on time. As the lead architect, he was responsible for ensuring the stonework met the high standards required for such a prestigious project. Most of the work was completed within five years and required careful planning and a large workforce, many of whom were highly skilled and commanded high wages. The workforce at Conway was one of the largest in Edward's Welsh campaign. Edward I's conquest of Wales was a brutal and relentless campaign. The construction of Conwy Castle marked the beginning of English dominance in the region, a dominance that was symbolised by this very fortress. Before the construction of the castle, this was the site of Aberconwy Abbey, the last resting place of Llewellyn the Great, the Welsh prince who almost succeeded in uniting most of Wales and holding off the English. Edward had Llewellyn's body moved so that he could build his fortress here as a stark reminder to the Welsh that North Wales was now under his control. But Conway Castle was more than just a military stronghold, it was also a royal residence and the royal apartments here were both luxurious and situated in one of the most heavily defended parts of the castle. The royal apartments were still part of the castle's defensive system and their walls were thick with narrow entrances which could be easily defended. From up here on the battlements you really get the feeling that you're safe from any danger outside. As long as you had supplies and a competent garrison you'd be well protected in a siege.
The castle's defences were soon put to the test. In 1294, when Madagat Llewellyn led a Welsh revolt against English rule, he declared himself the Prince of Wales and he led a widespread uprising. As the revolt began to spread, Edward found himself in a precarious situation. In December 1294, Edward and a small force of his men took refuge in Conway Castle. The situation was dire. The Welsh forces cut off supply lines to the castle, leading to a siege. Edward and his men were trapped inside, facing a harsh winter with dwindling provisions. The surrounding countryside was hostile and the defenders had to rely on the castle's formidable defences to withstand the siege. The siege lasted for several weeks, during which Edward's situation became increasingly desperate. The Welsh had cut off the supply routes and supplies inside the castle were dwindling. Amongst the remaining supplies, wine was considered a crucial commodity, not just for drinking, but for maintaining morale of the men. By January 1295, Edward and his men were down to their last barrel of wine, and being on their last wine reserves meant that their food supplies were also critically low. As a seasoned military leader and king, Edward was concerned for his men's morale and chose to share the last barrel of wine with his men rather than keeping it for himself. A naval expedition soon broke through the blockade. Supplies could now be brought in via the river, soon followed by reinforcements. Edward quickly launched a counter-offensive and the rebellion was crushed. Edward was back in control. The beauty of Conway Castle is that it can be defended by very few soldiers. Men could defend this side of the castle as long as they had enough crossbows. They could reload and shoot at the enemy all day long, as long as they had enough bolts to shoot. And that's the point of Edward I's Welsh castles. They could be defended by a very small garrison of soldiers. The advantage of the castle's waterside location meant that around 30 ships could be moored in the harbour, bringing in food and wine and commodities of trade. But more importantly, the ships could bring in horses and soldiers for Edward's conquest of Wales. Not only did Edward build a castle here, he constructed walls around the town to fortify it. And these walls are some of the best preserved fortifications in Europe. The walls stretch for nearly a mile around the town and include 21 defensive towers and three main gateways, all enclosing the original medieval town. The gateways would have been heavily fortified to control who went in and out of the town. And the towers provided excellent vantage points for spotting potential attackers. The rise of Henry Tudor to the throne of England was met with support from the Welsh and the need for the castle's military role declined. But thanks to the strategic brilliance and military precision of Master James of St George, the castle's towering walls still dominate the landscape today. Mm -hmm.